Hello, the one and only Xalophony here with some more Ark Survival Evolved fan-made dossiers. Now, I asked for some likes, you guys doubled the amount of likes I asked for, and here we are with some more dossiers. So of course, leave some more likes if you're excited to see more of these. As you see in the background now, we're scrolling through a couple of the fan-made dossiers that I will not be going over today, but if at any point you see one that you would like to look into, feel free to pause the video and check it out. And if you want to see any of these specifically uh, me going over, then let me know in the comments and I will add those to the next dossier video. Thing is, most of them are just very long -winded. Ended, so I decided to go with some of the shorter, more simple ones. But also, you can make your own dossiers. I was pointed out to this website, which gives you templates to make really good dossiers that look just like the ones that Ark makes, and you can use different programs to make some really neat looking stuff. As you see, you grab the book, you add any sort of designs you want on it, and then you get the name tag, the pictures, the little images that go along with it and lots of other cool things that will help you make a really good looking dossier. If any of you guys right now want to, uh, you know, try to figure something out that would be fun to make, go ahead and do that, and maybe next week I'll show off that one, just because these are really cool, and, well, maybe you'll get extra points with me if you make it something that relates to me, such as, you know, for example, Artemis, or Kevin's, or, you know, another type of dinosaur that you think I would like. I'll let you be completely creative on that, so, let's get into some of these dossiers we have. Let's start off with the Torvosaurus, an aggressive carnivore from the Jurassic period. It says, in the wild, although smaller than a Tyrannosaurus dominum, size doesn't matter to the Torvosaurus. Almost the size of a Carno, Torvosaurus will fight and kill dinosaurs even twice its size. Living in the grasslands, Torvosaurus gurnii has a massive amount of food and challengers. Carnotaurus presser, for example, will attempt to eat anything the Torvosaurus kills, or will try to kill the hungry Torvosaurus. Alright, so we got something that's a little smaller than a Carnotaur, but it's not afraid of anything. This thing will take down something twice its size, maybe it'll even fight a T-Rex in some certain cases. However, it doesn't particularly say they walk around in packs, so that's probably a very bad idea for him. Despite his size, I assume he's still pretty tough, probably a good early to mid game mount. It says when domesticated, although the Torvosaurus is most certainly tameable and rideable, has high health, stamina, and melee stats, it can become more aggressive at night and could turn on its owner, like the Giganotosaurus, but can be calmed down if fed meat. So this would be a very interesting thing to see added to the game. If there was a dinosaur that wasn't quite as large, dangerous, and threatening as a Giganotosaurus, but still had the same rage factor. Now of course it would be much less threatening if a Torvosaurus goes mad and tries to attack you, but if this is an early game mount and this is the strongest thing you have around, it could still be a pretty big problem. And feeding meat to it would generally help it out, I'm pretty sure that's how the Giganotosaurus calms down, it's just you don't feed meat to him, he takes meat from you. And uh, that's how that goes. But I, I really like this guy, he's simple, he's uh, pretty tough and pretty cool. So let's move on to the next one we have here. Ooh, the Eutyrannus. This is another aggressive carnivore from the early Cretaceous, and as you can see, it is very bird-like, yet still has many reptilian features. So, if you guys are jumping at those hybrid theories, this guy might be a good one to throw in there, although he is a regular creature. It says that in the wild, Eutyrannus huali is one of the larger creatures I've encountered on land. It is one of the apex predators on the colder parts of the island, where it will hunt a wide range of different species. They usually hunt alone, but are sometimes found hunting in very small groups. So as you can see in the picture right below that text, we see this thing is pretty large. Maybe not the largest thing on the island, but still very, very threatening. With large claws, large teeth, and usable arms, it can be a great danger to anyone on the island. And it also will walk around in the colder climates. It probably has some nice thick warm feathers, so it'll be able to survive. It also says here that Eutyrannus have bright feathers which help when trying to attract a mate. These feathers also keep the dinosaur warm by reducing heat loss, meaning it's perfectly at home in the frozen tundra. Eutyrannus are so warm that its heat can even keep their rider warm. So that's good, these guys will be amazing if you're trying to navigate the icy tundra. It'll keep you warm even if you're just walking around in your flak armor, well, rather riding around with your flak armor, and they'll be able to defend you from just about anything, especially when saddled and trained. That'll definitely help out. 
having these types of things to keep you warm and keeping you safe would be great. So when domesticated, taming such a beast has a lot of benefits. One benefit being that you're able to harvest the best meat from large creatures much more efficiently compared to using tools or other predators. Uteranus have very strong jaws which are perfect for ripping through their enemies, and they also have excellent stamina to chase down prey. So it doesn't seem like there's really a downside to these guys. Now, here's where I call out that they are a little bit overpowered. Now, if they didn't have the great gathering capabilities and maybe their stamina was a little bit less, it would make sense. You know, a very strong predator for the icy climates would be great. But this thing, if ever added to the game, if it did carry these kind of stats over, would be an extremely high tier tame. And it would be very, very good to get, very useful, and probably the best thing to have around in the cold climate. Let's move on to another feathered creature, the Teratornus Merium. Now, as you can see, this is a carrion feeder who largely resembles a vulture. However, he is much larger than your average vulture, getting close to the size of an Argentavis. Now, the thing about them is they're usually known as the Eagles of Ark, but they also more closely resemble vultures. This will just be taking it another step, and everyone's going to be calling these vultures. No one's going to call this thing an eagle. It says that in the wild, Teratornus are found scattered across the island's desert and hot barren lands. They are not fussy eaters and will eat any meat that they find. They are capable of inflicting serious damage, but would rather avoid combat unless provoked. So it seems these guys are also much more docile than the Argentavis. They will not go attacking people, they usually will just try to steal your kill. Now, if they find something on the ground, they will take it. They are carrion feeders, and they'll try to eat things that have been sitting there for a while. It says that the gut of the Teratornus is filled with strange bacteria, which allow it to digest meat that has been spoiled with no negative effects. So this will be very similar to the scorpion, they enjoy spoiled meat. I think this would be a, a great addition to the game, especially when they add those desert biomes everyone's always on about. So that could be a really cool addition. Plus, it, I think it would be a little bit weird to see normal eagles flying around in the desert, but this would add a little bit more uh, variety to the environment of Ark. It says when domesticated, although Argentavis appears to be superior as it cannot carry as much weight or deal as much damage, Teratornus has much better stamina and can be useful for covering large distances. Okay, so this is one of those little things that makes this guy a little bit weaker than the Argentavis. He doesn't do as much damage and he doesn't have as much carry weight, but he does have more stamina. Now personally, I think Argentavis has enough stamina to carry you anywhere you need to go, so that's not a massively good benefit, but perhaps this guy will be faster. I don't think he would need to be faster considering you usually see ultras just floating around slowly until they find their prey, but to make this guy a little more balanced maybe that would be the case, or maybe he would just be a lower level tame. I think the desert would be a very unforgiving environment though, so anything found in the desert will surely be uh, worth getting I would assume if they're going to try to balance the game. But let's move on to the next dossier here, one that you've probably all heard of before, the Acrocanthosaurus. Now we've done other dossiers on the Acrocanthosaurus, but this one is just fierce looking and it's pretty cool. So of course Acrocanthosaurus is a carnivore very aggressive from the early Cretaceous. It says here in the wild, Acrocanthosaurus carcarodontus is an apex predator. Although it is not as large and powerful as a rex, it is sometimes seen ambushing sauropods. Preferring to take down its prey by surprise, it tears chunks of flesh from the giants with an iron-crushing bite, leaving them to slowly bleed to death. So, looks like this guy tries to take advantage of the sauropod size. He may not be the type of creature to go and fight head-to-head -head with the sauropod, but he will try to take them down, mostly by making them suffer pain over a long period of time. It says Acrocanthosaurus are found in various environments, both in deep jungles and on vast cold tundras. They have a huge olfactory gland that gives them a keen sense of smell. When wandering the open plains, Acrocanthosaurus is happy to feast on a stolen carcass, scaring off would-be aggressors using its sheer strength. And I'm not gonna lie, I'd probably be afraid of this thing too. Something just about as big as a T-Rex, and well, a little more aggressive looking I might say. So that would definitely be a really cool thing to see. Obviously these guys will do a good amount of damage, but they are not afraid to just walk up and steal an already dead kill. 
So that is a very cool thing about these guys. It says when domesticated, although capable of sprinting for very short distances, it does not make a great mount. However, Acro is very effective at taking down large prey, sporting huge razor-like teeth thanks to its Carcharodontosaurid, oh that's a name, Carcharodontosaurid descent, thus making it very effective at gathering large quantities of prime meat. Its major weakness is its truly mediocre eyesight, but that doesn't mean that sneaking up on these guys is easy. Acrocanthosaurus will likely sniff you out before getting close enough for a decent shot. Alright, so their weakness is their eyesight, but their sense of smell pretty much makes up for it. So these guys would just be another apex predator on the island, with a couple different features from a T-Rex and a bunch different from a Spinosaurus. They have that slow bleed, they have that raw power, but their stamina is going to be really low. Now for the final dossier, what I have here is... Another Acrocanthosaurus. Okay, it's, it's actually just the same one with different text on it, but might as well go over it because we're going over the Acrocanthosaurus anyway. It says an apex hunter that can be found tracking sauropods and moderate sized herbivores. Acrocanthosaurus carcharodontis is among the most ferocious creatures I've seen on the island and it is by far the most dangerous theropod in its size class. I would imagine so, these things may be more dangerous than the T-Rex while being a little smaller than the T-Rex. The only Thing you have to survive against these guys is just running away from them considering their low amounts of stamina so that is one way to help you out it says when domesticated here based on its moderate size acrocanthosaurus makes the ideal combat mount well this kind of contradicts with the other dossier a capable of traveling long distances with a decent rate of stamp okay so these are very different Unfortunately, its ferocity means that most attempts to tame Acrocanthosaurus often turns into a frenzied feed, as it tears through would-be survivors, leaving nothing but a bloodied mess. Okay, so this thing is most likely stronger than the T-Rex, the way these dossiers both describe it, but it's either low on stamina or low on patience and very difficult to be tamed. I think Acrocanthosaurus is a really useful thing. Many people love the Carcharodontosaurus, and I think it's very similar to that. In fact, it's a type of Carcharodontosaurid. That is one of my new favorite words, by the way. So if you think this guy is awesome, go tame yourself a Giga. The Giganotosaurus is also a type of Carcharodontosaurid. So I think that is a reason why something like this will probably not be added to the game. But with how many theropods people want to see, Carcharodontosaurus, Acrocanthosaurus, or anything along that line might be added in the future. So, before we end off this video, I do want to briefly show off two more dossiers. Now, we're not going to go into the text on these, but these ones were actually ones that a couple of you guys made for me a little while ago that I never got to in another video. So, show these things a little bit of love, we got the Ultimasaurus and the Sukumimus. As you can see, this one looks like it was just done in the middle of school, trying not to get in trouble. Quick, let's make a dossier for Xylo. And although I can't condone that, you must uh, focus in school, it's still pretty awesome. So if you guys want to make some dossiers for me, make sure to check out that link in the description. We can have some really fun and crazy ones, obviously get as creative as you want. The more crazy, maybe the more fun it'll be. So, thank you everyone for watching this video. If you want to see more dossier videos, let's get this video to uh, 200... Uh, 41 likes. Mm, yeah, now that sounds good. So, I will see you guys next time. Have a snazzy day, and goodbye.